Lubbock, Texas may seem like an unlikely location for state-of-the-art wound care, but it's home to the Southwest Regional Wound Care Center and the Pathogenius Laboratory. Using DNA sequencing technology and new treatment protocols, the center and its medical director, Dr. Randy Walcott, are saving limbs and lives. This is a big deal. After you see people leave this world a piece at a time, when you see the wounds go bad and then they lose one leg, they lose the other leg, and then they pass away and they're only 40 and 50 and stuff, then all of a sudden it becomes personal. And these are people that you care about, you know, and, and you feel so, uh, you, you, want, you want to do whatever it takes to stop that from happening. Andy Anderson is one of Dr. Walcott's patients, a diabetic, Anderson developed some serious foot blisters during a golf outing. A kidney problem landed him in the hospital where his condition went from bad to worse. When I was in the hospital, I caught a staph infection, uh, the flesh-eating kind, that real fast-moving kind in the back, and both, both of those blisters went up the back of my legs about 10 inches, and they had to cut it all out all the way to the bone. Well, uh, every one of the doctors, they all came and talked to me and said, listen, you need to listen to us, you need to we need to amputate those legs because you're gonna, you're not gonna ever heal those legs. And of course, I didn't agree with him. And I, and I talked to Dr. Walcott, and he, he thought we could save it. And and I said, that's what I'm gonna do. You have diabetic foot ulcers, and doctors really believe. We believe with our whole heart that bacteria is, is one of the main things that makes this extend and eat down into you and causes the problems and puts you at risk for losing your legs. The problem is when we get cultures and when we give antibiotics, it doesn't make any difference in the outcomes. Okay, so because of you, we went out and we started looking for new methods and one of the methods is that molecular culture that we do. We can look in and see what what's happening on the surface of a wound that we've been missing that for the entirety of wound care and now that we can see uh, we we saw we, we understand a different microbial reality it's not one organism causes one infection it's a bunch of organisms that get together and they form a, a, a biofilm and they cause an infection this is a whole different microbial reality than what the, than what we were looking at now, my, microbiologists have known about this for decades. Infectious disease doctors know that this exists. The problem was there was never any tools to really get in and look at it. We do have a tool that we can look at it now in a cost-effective, real-time way, in a, in a clinically proven way, and, and it does make a huge difference. We look at the bacteria we tr uh, with the molecular methods, then we treat specifically what we see. We're gonna find out what, identify the microorganisms that are there, then we'll reformulate the gel and, and target what's there. Dr. Walcott and Pathogenius have taken an extremely complex technology and developed a diagnostic and treatment program simple enough to be used in any doctor's office. And this molecular diagnostic technique is now available to doctors and nurses all over the world. Here we like to make things easier for our physicians and collecting patient samples. We provide every physician with a sample kit in order to collect the patient sample. In the sample kit we provide the tube in which you collect your patient sample in, the bag in which you put this uh, sample tube in in order to ship it, and we provide the requisition, which is the lab sheet, and you detail the patient information. We've just been doing trial and error uh, throughout all of wound care, and what we decided was that clinicians really believe that bacteria is a problem, let's attack it specifically. Molecular diagnostics lets us know what's there, and then if we can identify those organisms, then there's no reason we can't formulate a topical that treats that specifically. Most of the time, over 50% of the time, you're gonna to have to reformulate, you're gonna to have to re-diagnose uh, what's on the surface of the wound, reformulate the gel, but now you have a tool. It, it's diagnose, treat, instead of trial and error. The bacteria on the surface of your wound isn't all the same every place in the wound. We're, we're going to take the surface stuff off so that we're dealing with the stuff that's closer to you. So I, I just go down to there's a little bit of bleeding. And this all this slough has bacteria in it, but I don't know if that's the important bacteria or not. 
Nobody knows if that's the important bacteria. So what I've chosen to do is now we get up close and we get some of your tissue with the bacteria. Now I know that's the bacteria that's touching you. That's the bacteria that's, that, that possibly is, is the main thing. I've taken, I've taken slough off the surface of your wound from all over, up in the gutters and on the, in the mid portion of the wound. And so now I've kind of, I'm going to average or I'm going to, I'm going to get samples from all those different areas on the surface of your wounds. My deal here is I'm trying to identify as many bacteria as, as we can and get some quantitation on what's the main thing. What's the main bug here? We received Andy's sample from Dr. Walcott. And the first thing we do when we receive a sample like that is we take it to the back and we unpack it and we accession it into our laboratory information system. And we use that to track the patient's information and their status and the results of the test. We do DNA extraction on patient samples because when we receive the sample, it's usually a tissue and we're looking for bacteria. So sometimes the bacteria is gonna be, it's not gonna be easily accessible. So we grind up the tissue essentially and we do DNA extraction. And DNA extraction removes protein and lipids and other cellular debris that can interfere. And by doing the extraction, we're isolating the DNA and making it pure and clean so that it can be used more efficiently in a downstream procedure. After the DNA is extracted, it's placed inside a state-of-the-art machine that amplifies and analyzes the molecular material. Essentially, you're taking one target strand of DNA and turning it into an exponential amount of DNA. So if it starts at one, it's going to go to two, from two to four. So it just uh, amplifies your DNA and makes it a lot easier for the machine to find. Using the Fluidime real-time PCR machine, we can detect up to 60 bacteria, types of bacteria in a patient sample in approximately 24 hours as opposed to several days using traditional methods. If any of those 60 common forms of bacteria are found, the patient's doctor receives an immediate update. The molecular sample is now sent to the more thorough DNA sequencer. This high-tech device is capable of identifying thousands of bacteria and fungi. If a bacteria or fungi is in the database, this DNA sequencer will find and identify it. The sequence that we compare the DNA information we get from the sequencer holds 140,000 sequences, which translates to approximately 12,000 bacterial species, and any number of those 12,000 species can be present in a patient sample. Once the bacteria are identified by Pathogenius, the physician receives a written analysis, treatment recommendations, and the option of ordering a customized treatment gel. So Andy, we got the results back from the molecular identification, and it's showing us that we do have a new bug. It's Acinetobacter balmy. And the, the good news is, is 90% of this is Acinetobacter. Okay, that means it's, it's, it's not as diverse as most biofilms. We got about three different organisms identified at a 1% or higher rate. So, there, so we have a major dominant community. That means if we attack it specifically, it should collapse. And now hopefully there's not a lot of other bugs there that can regrow and take over that space. So that, that's a real good indicator for us. Now that Dr. Walcott knows what bacteria are infecting Andy's wounds, he orders a custom treatment gel from his medical partners at South University in Savannah, Georgia. The university is home to the only team of pharmacists in the U.S. who specialized in treating biofilm infections. Using the pathogenous DNA analysis as a blueprint, the pharmacists create a customized treatment gel for Andy. The gel contains antibiotics, antimicrobials, and other bacteria-killing agents. By knowing what bacteria is infecting Andy, the team can compound the ingredients that have been proven effective in killing those specific organisms. The treatment gel is customized for each patient and can be reformulated as new kinds of bacteria emerge. Once we identify what's in there, we know which ones to put in to, to control that bacteria.
Andy's gel is waiting for him at Dr. Walcott's office. It's easily administered in a medical office setting. So I'm going to reminisce a bit. So when I went up to your room up in, in the hospital, you had uh, you'd, uh, had necrosis of both Achilles tendon from some sort of pressure event, and the infectious disease doctor stopped me right outside your room. Now, do you remember the argument? Do you remember oh, hearing yeah. that? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. So, I know him, too. Yeah. yeah. So. And he, he wanted both these legs off. Right. Uh, because that's the only thing that would save your life. You would die otherwise and everything. But then after talking to you, I realized, you know, you're a golfer, you're active, you know, that wasn't going to work. Dr. Walcott has saved my legs and saved my life. I've actually changed all those doctors that, that wanted to cut my legs off are not my doctors anymore. So, and I'm sitting here today with my, my legs still on, attached to my body. So I'm, I'm real happy. I do think within probably the next year, I think I'll be able to get back on the golf course. 50,000 people die each year from their wounds. Uh, like Christopher Reeves, you know, Superman died of his decubitus ulcer. People die from their diabetic foot ulcers. I mean, it's a lot and they suffer and they die. And that's kind of what drives you. Don't want ever, want, I, I don't ever want to go back to the way it was. To request testing kits or for more information, contact the Pathogenius Laboratory.